good morning. This is Donna here at Hazelbell Farm and we are back in milk since we've been milking Dolly and I've uh, got a little bit of extra and which is great because we're at the bottom of our yogurt and I need to get some more made. So I'm going to show you today how we make yogurt here on our farm. Um, there's different ways that you can do that. We use a raw milk and so um, we choose to pasture a low heat pasteurization uh, for our yogurt. Everything else we do, we use our raw milk. Um, anything that's going to need to incubate um, with the existing bacteria, even though we inoculate it with another bacteria, we typically will do a low heat pasteurization. There's very few things, uh, but yogurt is one of those things. And I want to kind of go over how we do that and I'll try to talk you through other ways you can do it as I go along. So to start, you're gonna need a gallon of milk. So I've got my two half gallon jars here. You're gonna need a good pot to heat it up. You can use an instant pot. I'm going to use an instant pot, I've got it right here, to incubate the yogurt um, with, with the new inoculation in it. Um, you can do this whole thing in the instant pot if you choose. Mine happens to be full at the moment, so I've got to empty it and I, need, I needed to buy a little time, so I'm using a separate pot. Um, and then you're gonna need a good kitchen thermometer uh, to do that low heat pasteurization and to bring it back down. And you're also gonna need a yogurt starter. Now you can use a purchased yogurt starter. I like to use cultures for health, for some uh, culture type things that we need. You can also use a good store-bought um, active bacteria yogurt. We're actually going to use the bottom of our last batch of yogurt. So you're gonna need a couple of tablespoons of yogurt. I wanna say like two tablespoons is typically what we use, no more than a quarter cup. If you use too much, you end up with a, a runny yogurt. I don't really know how that works, but that's how it works. Um, and then I'll kind of go through the steps. So this is actually gonna be a multi-day process for our family because we like a thickly strained Greek style yogurt. Um, and we like a tangy yogurt as well, so we need a longer incubation time. So to get started, we're gonna heat up our milk. All right, so I have my one gallon of yogurt. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I have to shake my milk um, because it is raw and the cream separates out, so. This will be a whole fat yogurt. You could skim the cream off if you like. This isn't a super fatty milk out of our Holstein because Holsteins don't give a whole lot of butter fat. Now you could make yogurt with a store purchased uh, milk. That's not a problem at all. The only time I've ever seen that be a problem with any kind of dairy products like cheese and that is if you use a, a high heat, ultra ultra high heat pasteurized milk. Um, those products tend to not play very well in the kitchen. So you can use, uh, but you can use a pasteurized milk or um, a raw milk purchased from a health food store or another farm. Um, this is, like I said, this is how we do it. Okay, we're on a medium heat to start. Uh, you don't want your milk to scorch, so don't, don't do anything on a high heat. I will actually turn this down to a medium low here in a little bit once it starts coming up to temperature. Um, it's cold right now. I'm just trying to get this cream stirred in as best I can. Go ahead and stick my thermometer in here so you can see right now. Let's see, it's sitting at about 60. And so we want to bring it up to 180 degrees, which is going to be just below the point it starts to boil. You can see that cream separating out. <laughs> That's just a raw milk property there. that to stay stay mixed in the best I can all right so this will take a few minutes to come up to temperature okay. 
All right, you're gonna stir occasionally as it comes up to temperature. You can see it's a, mine's a little bit warm. You wanna get it to 180. I let it sit an extra minute without stirring and paying much attention to it. That's okay. Um, as long as it's not scorching and you'll know, like you'll be able to smell it pretty quickly if it does scorch. Um, it gets a little bit frothy and foamy on top and that's okay too. So I'm just gonna stir this to try to bring the temperature down just a little bit. When you do this in a pot on the stove, you wanna make sure that you're using a thick bottom pot to, so that you don't have too much direct heat right there on the milk from the burner and that'll keep it from scorching. Some people say you gotta put a little bit of water in the bottom of your pot first and then empty that out just so that it's wet but, but not holding water. I don't find that to be necessary. I've tried it, it hasn't really made a difference. Okay, so if you were to use your Instant Pot to do this, um, you can use the saute setting on low. Uh, it takes longer for that to work. I, I find it takes like a good 35 to 45 minutes for it to come up to temperature. Um, you know, where versus on your stovetop, it's gonna take like 10 minutes to come up. So you can see here on my thermometer, I'm sitting at like 190. And the next thing I'm gonna do is just leave it alone. It's just gonna sit until it comes back down to about 105. I want it to be between 105 and 110. So it's gonna take a little while and that's okay. That's perfect for me right now in the morning because I'm headed out to do chores. If you find yourself in a time crunch, you can put your whole pot in an ice bath. Um, just make sure you, know, you don't have water spilling in over the top and that'll, that'll help speed the process along. Okay, so I've just come in, <clears throat> it's been about an hour later, just over an hour, it's not quite there yet. It's sitting at about 125. That's still too hot to mix in your yogurt culture. If you did that, then you would kill the good bacteria that you want to thrive and multiply. Um, so I just wanted to kind of show what's happening here. There's a skin on top of this milk. I'm just gonna kind of push it aside. It's okay, it's not the end of the world. And I'm gonna give this a stir to help the cooling process. And I'm gonna leave it sit a little bit longer. Okay, it is almost another hour later and I'm sitting right over 100 degrees. So uh, let's move on to the next step. Okay, so here we are an hour later. Uh, remember, you want your milk to come up between 100 and 110. 105 is perfect. I waited a little bit too long. I was outside finishing morning chores and took too long, but that's okay. Um, this is pretty forgiving. So I'm at like 101, 102, and that's, that'll work just fine. Um, so I'm going to remove that top skin that has formed. It's kind of gross. Not the end of the world though. It's just where the milk has reacted with the air. All right, give this a stir. I'll feed that to the dog or the chickens or somebody. Okay, I'm gonna start with an empty measuring cup. I'm gonna dip out a little bit of the milk. About three quarters cup. Doesn't have to be perfect. And I'm gonna pour the rest of it into my clean Instant Pot. If you had warmed your milk in the Instant Pot and then let it sit there while it came back down to the temperature that you wanted, um, one, it may take a little bit longer. You might wanna take that whole pot liner out to let it cool a little bit faster. And again, you can put it in an ice bath in the sink or a bigger bowl if, you, if you're crunched for time. Um, but otherwise, you wouldn't have to do anything. You would just move on from here. All right, so I have that milk. I have my previous batch of yogurt. And this is actually not a Greek strained yogurt, but that's okay. 
I'm going to put a couple of tablespoons in here. So what we're doing is we're tempering the existing yogurt culture. Mix this up to temper it. And that's so that you don't shock the cultures and kill them off with the warm milk. So do that until it's good, well mixed, and it's not so clumpy. That's it, I'm gonna pour it in the pot. Okay, so there it is in the Instant Pot from here. I'm gonna put the lid on. This is my favorite way to do this. It doesn't matter if uh, this is vented or not. Let's see, I'm going to push yogurt. Now from here, you can decide how, um, how much time you wanna go. Okay, so we already have a pretty tangy strain of yogurt going on, so I only need to let it go for eight hours. If you're starting fresh from a new culture and you really like a tangy your yogurt, you want to let it incubate for about 12 hours. Eight hours is going to be your minimum. You can go as long as you want after that. Um, so this is going eight hours, like I said, because we've, we've gone several, several generations on this strain. It's good and tangy, um, so eight hours is plenty of time. Um, if you do not have an instant pot, at this point, what you could do is once you have incubated that warm milk, you could pour that off into jars and you can put it in your oven with just the light on. You could, um, I've done several things. We used to, before we had an instant pot, we used to um, put those jars into a thermal tote with a heating pad on low in the bottom, wrap those uh, jars up in towels. You could do that in a cooler or something like that. And when, at that point, we would let it go for about 12 hours. Um, that's, that's what it needed. So the idea is to have the milk maintain its temperature at that between 100 and 110 range. You don't want to get it too hot, you'll kill your culture, and you don't want it to cool because that culture won't incubate to get, get you a good yogurt. So there's several ways you can do that. This is my favorite, it's the simplest. If you have an Instant Pot, I highly recommend you do it. And then one last word on the Instant Pot. It had the yogurt setting that it has. Um, I have not found it to be beneficial to, and maybe it's the model Instant Pot I have, I don't know. But a lot of people say they just do the whole thing in the Instant Pot, push the yogurt button, it warms it, it does everything on its own. I haven't found that to be the case for us. Um, so that's, that's why I always warm it all the way up first, either on that saute function or on the stove top. Um, but some people say that they could just pour their milk in, pour their yogurt culture in, and then they push the yogurt button and let it go. So I don't know, maybe that's an option with the model um, that those folks have, but I have not cared for it that way. It comes out very runny, um, and I can get that same product just on my countertop, basically like a clabbered milk, and, and that's not the flavor we're going for. Okay, so it's actually nine hours later, but that's okay. Um, it can go longer, it's no problem. So you can see the Instant Pot says yogurt, so that means it's finished. And, and you can see it can be like sliced into. That is the way in there. Okay, so this is good yogurt. You could just uh, put this in jars and chill it in the refrigerator if you wanted, but we like Greek style yogurt. We like it really thick, so I'm gonna um, go ahead and chill this first, and then I'm going to strain it. So here's what we do next. All right, so next, I just cover the whole thing over with plastic wrap. and pop it in the fridge. All right, that's it. It'll sit there till tomorrow morning. Okay, so it's the next day. I have my chilled yogurt here out of the Instant Pot. I have a couple of quart-sized jars, and I have a strainer. This is a yogurt strainer. Um, I believe I ordered this from Amazon. It's been several years. Um, so I like this because you could strain in just a colander and a flour sack cloth or something like that. Um, but I like this because it has a lid. So 
so I can store that away in the refrigerator and set things on top of it. Um, whereas, you know, something with an open top, you can't. Um, so I like, and it's easily, I throw it in the dishwasher when I'm finished with it. It's got a very fine mesh strainer. And then the bottom is clear. So you can see, it's also got some measuring on here. You can see how many cups of whey are drained off um, and kind of what's going on. So I'm going to fill that up and whatever's left over will go in the jars. So here's my yogurt. You can see it's rather thick. We're on a pretty thick strain anyways. Oh, right. Okay, because I can't be trusted to not make a mess. Okay, so this is full. Put the lid on. I'll show you that up close here in just a moment. Now you can let this strain as long as you want. You just have to be careful that you don't end up with more of like a cheese, which if that's what you want, then that's great. Um, it's not actually cheese, but you can get it so thick that it's almost like a cream cheese consistency. Um, so it just depends on what you want, really. jar because all the jars of white stuff look alike in the refrigerator. <laughs> all right, so these just go in the fridge. And you can see where the whey is starting to drain through the bottom. You can see just how thick it is already. So um, it, I don't need to strain it for too terribly long. But I'll pop it in the fridge for a few hours and then uh, give it a good taste test. So this is just like your plain Greek style yogurt that you would buy in the grocery store. Um, uh, after that, I'll, I'll leave it plain in the refrigerator. As we use it, um, we'll sweeten it and we'll add some vanilla, maybe some strawberry jam, fruit, whatever you want. But you can also use it uh, like in place of a sour cream and um you know baked potato topping or stuff like that so um it it stays plain until we use it for the most part that's how we do it it's actually sat for about 36 hours instead of just a couple of hours that's okay because we like a thick yogurt so this is our greek style strained yogurt you can see how much whey has drained off There you have it, our Greek style yogurt. So that's how we make our yogurt from start to finish here at our home. We hope you enjoyed and if you liked it, please like and subscribe for more.